Hi folks, my name is Freddy and in this video we're going to figure out how to repair your Opal with a faulty ECU. On some older Opals, just a simple swap on some parts is possible, but not all of them. See this as a beginner's guide because there are a few different ways how to repair this. If you have any of the fault codes in the description, it is likely that one or more of the so-called bridges inside the ECU is broken. These bridges communicate with various sensors and electronics. If these bridges fail, the problem occurs with coil pack, camshaft sensors and, and so on. You can make a repair on a car like this on your own, depending on the circumstances. Uh, but you need to know what things to look for before collecting parts for the vehicle. Uh, the car I worked on for this video is an Astra G from 2000. And the parts you need to collect is an engine ECU, a key, uh, the immobilizer antenna located around the ignition lock, and if possible, the Opel car pass that most likely is still in the glove compartment of the donor car. Uh, another important thing is that all of these parts must come from the same donor car. The Opel car pass will come in handy in the future if any coding or other stuff needs doing. Before getting deeper into this, a swap of these parts and then have a running car again is possible if it's an Astra G or an older Safira A. Newer cars sharing the same ECU like the Meriva or Corsa C you need to have computer programs to make it running. More on that later. Where to draw a line between newer or older car regarding this issue, it's a bit hard. In my experience, it's only Astro G and Safira A early years where a swap like this is possible. Feel free to comment below, however, with your experience to help others. Uh, for starters, uh, let's talk about the swap and go solution if possible. Uh, start with getting the part number on the back of the ECU. With this in hand, we don't need to know any of the other numbers on the antenna or the key itself. But what we do need to know more about the donor car is the following. Does the car have cruise control? What type of transmission, manual or automatic? Does it have air condition, ABS brakes and further on if it has ESP or TCS? All of these questions need to have the same preferences like your broken car. Otherwise, just a swap won't work as intended. Another thing to have in mind is that even if the ECU have the same part number, you also need to know if the ECU is from the same car model. If not, you likely have a lit engine light and an engine fan ramping up because the ECU asks for coolant sensors and so on that doesn't exist on your vehicle. With these things I just said in mind, there is a good chance that the car starts without hassle though. But the thing with the newer cars I mentioned before is that the Mariva, for example, have some preferences in the instrument cluster and the body control module, BCM. Astra G, like the ones I made a swap like this on, have preferences as well, but it works without doing any work with it. So the solution mentioned works on Astra G, but not on Mariva A, even though it's the same ECU. At least, that's what I have experience with. So to make a swap like this is not easy. It's many things to have in mind, and doing a repair like that changes the identity of your vehicle. Take this in consideration before you make your mind up regarding which way to go with this. There is another way to do this as well, more to be the considered the right way, so to speak. Uh, that involves coding and requires program you may not have. In my opinion, it's the best solution, but these cars are getting old and to be aware of what options are possible is always welcome. The best and most solid way to make this work is to simply get yourself an ECU and the Opel car pass with a pin code on. Then you use a program called CarProg or Opcom to do the coding necessary. If you have these programs, you don't need the antenna ring or the key from the donor car. This is intended as a beginner's guide to 
get a clue on how it works and what not. So I'm not going to go any further into the coding part. An Opcom, however, costs around 40 US dollars on eBay if you want to try out doing the coding though. Opcom is primarily for Opal but works with some Saab etc as well. So, to summarize all this, there is some chances to take regarding just swapping parts. For some cars a simple swap is not possible. If you want a solid solution or don't find a complete donor kit mentioned for your vehicle, find a workshop to do the coding for you. Once you have the ECU uh, and the PIN code in hand, an Opal dealership can do the coding for you as well. At least for now. So friends, if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you're into more car repairs, fault finding and so on with me, you should consider subscribing. Now go out to your garage, your small workshop and make an impact.